All right, here's Skeeter. Right, Skeeter? <laughs> show me your wings. Go ahead, show them. Flap them wings. You can do it. Show them wings. Come on, show us the wings. Do wings. No wings. <laughs> Welcome back to the Midday q and I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> We're back today with the Midday q and which mostly consists of a mail call video. Right here is my co-host, Skeeter the Duck. She's got her own YouTube channel. You should be subscribing to it. We don't upload a whole lot of videos on there, but we do periodically, and we're going to put one up there again soon, aren't we? Yes, we are. Yes, we are, but you just got out of the pool today. Yeah, you were in the pool with your brother. You were playing out in the yard. Your brother climbed up on top of my trailer and thought he owned the world. It was pretty funny, huh? Yes. <laughs> well, anyways, like, comment, subscribe. Check out her channel, Skeeter the Duck. Join us up on the Instagram page. And if you're curious how to get to Instagram, visit our website, duckshit.net. It's right up here in the corner of the screen. Visit that website. You'll find links to all of my different social media, all of my different YouTube channels, and hell, anything else that I'm involved in. You will find it there. Thanks so much for watching. We'll be back right after the intro. All right, up here on the mailing call today, we got one box here from uh, Amazon. Doesn't actually have anybody's name on it. This was Sam from California. And this one said somebody from Maryland. I crossed his name off, so unfortunately, um, I don't have it there anymore. <laughs> Let's check here real quick. Hang on, I still got it. Uh, that would be Matthew. Matthew Pinniger. That's right. It's Matt Pinniger right here. He, he was concerned that I wasn't going to say his name right, but Pinnager was actually what I would have guessed. So, thank you, Matt. Let's go ahead and bust some of these boxes right open. Let's see. Which one do you want to go with first, Skeeter? Look. All these boxes. Which one do you want? Want this one? You want this one? You want this one? You want this one? <laughs> all right. You can't seem to decide. It looks like you just want them all. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's just go for the one here on the right-hand side. This one would be from Amazon. And we're going to bust that right open right here on video. Right, Skeeter? Yes. Look at this. What is it? What could it be? Could be anything. I hope somebody got weird today. Maybe we got a little bit of weirdness. All right. We got a couple things in here. First things, let's look at the note. The note says, boom. It uh, doesn't say what it is. Let's look at the next one. All right. You can return your gift. Why would I do that? You can return your gift. There's no notes. No, there's no notes on this, unfortunately. It actually says what it is, but let's not go ahead and look at that. Let's actually check out what's in the package here. Now, these are, and I see exactly what they are, these are stainless steel zip ties. That is right. Stainless steel zip ties. Now, I know exactly who this is from because he emailed me, so I'm going to check that email real quick and see if I can remember whose name it was. The second thing is, um, well, I guess this is kind of like getting weird. It's kind of getting weird. <laughs> it's a giant duck mask. Oh, hell yeah. We're going to have a lot of fun with that. Let's go ahead and clip this thing right off of here. We got this little tag on here. It's not allowing me to open it up properly. There we go. That is going to be a blast. I can scare the crap out of people with that one. You want to see it, Skeeter? Look. You like that? You going to eat it? You giving it kisses? <laughs> Let me check my email real quick and find out who that came from. All right, well, I had to go ahead and check the box because I was quite uncertain as to who it came from, but um, there's no note in the box. And when I went and looked at my email, I was actually warned that this was going to come in, and it came from somebody named Dan Isdale, who's a fan of ours. Right, Skeeter? You know who that is, right? You want to eat the paper? No, you don't eat that paper. We're going to make you some nice dinner in a little while. But you're not afraid of this. I figured you'd be spooked a little bit, huh? You're not afraid of that. No, you're not even afraid a little bit. Maybe we'll put it on you. What do you think? You want to have it on you? No, I don't think you like that very much. <laughs> but that's going to be fun. I can't wait to scare kids with it. Because <laughs> you know that's exactly what it's going to do. Maybe I'll even squeeze it over my motorcycle helmet. It is a latex, so it does stretch pretty well. It could even be a giant condom. Yeah. How about that? What? You want to wear a condom on your head? No, you don't want that. You don't want that. Okay. 
But the stainless steel zip ties are incredibly useful. Uh, you can do things like uh, zip tie your oil line directly to your exhaust pipe. <laughs> Good skeeter. She knew better. <laughs> Anyway, these are going to come incredibly useful. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate that. Let's see what else we got here. Looks like my uh, microphone battery might be about to crap out, so we've got to finish this up kind of quick. Let's see how long we can make it through here. Going to keep an eye on the VU meter here and see uh, just what happens. All right, next box. Let's open up this one. This one came from Matt Pinnegar. Yes. We got paper. Thank you so much. Wow, look at this. We can write notes on it. <laughs> you don't want that. You don't want that. This has got some weight to it. I wonder what it is. Okay, let's see here. Uh, opaque envelopes. It's just a generic box. Okay. Let's see if I can get in here without destroying the box. Look at this. Are you excited to see what's in here? Yeah, are you? You look excited. More paper! Hell yeah! Look at this! We got coupons to, to price cutter. Hell yeah, look at that. Apparently they sell liquor. Now that's my speed. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> we got more stuff in here. I don't know if I should dump it out or should I just pull it out one by one? Let's pull it out one by one. Let's see, what's this piece? It's a brick of soap. Fight Club soap. That's uh, That's really nice. Let's see what else we got in here. <laughs> more paper, more paper, more paper. Right, go ahead and throw this right in the can behind us. And what we got here? It's squishy. What could it be? What do you think it is? It's probably Parmalat milk. Yeah, ball powder. Oh, hell yes. You know, that could not have come at a better time. Summer officially started right here in Pensacola about two weeks ago. The middle of May is usually when it starts to get incredibly hot and my balls start to stick to my knees. And I mean, it is just, <laughs> it's bad. And I just pulled the last ball powder out from underneath the seat of Ruby when I was at a car show last weekend and I squeezed it and barely got anything out of it. And it wasn't even enough for the car show. Tomorrow I'm going to a car show. It's supposed to be in the mid friggin 90s. It's going to be hot as fuck. And if my balls aren't sticking to my knees, they're going to be probably in my shoes. <laughs> this could not have come in a better time, and I'm glad I didn't wait for another day to open it. And it might seem stupid that something like ball powder is so considerable to me, but this is just incredibly useful. I mean, you have no idea. Matt, you've protected my balls. You and me are probably going to be probably the best friends ever. I mean, the only thing you could do better to my balls is, well... We're not going to get into that, but <laughs> you've protected them. You want some, Skeeter? You can protect your balls with it, and you won't have no balls. <laughs> Boomer's calling you, though. All right, well, this this is... Wow. Yeah, I'll put it with you. You can guard it, okay? <laughs> well, let's see what else we got. We got one more box here. We got this one here, which comes out of California from somebody named Sam. Hopefully, there's a good note in here. All right, what is all that? Stuff written in some kind of Asian language. It appears to be possibly Chinese. I don't know. I'm not really up on Asian languages, but uh, just looking at it off the top of my head, it doesn't appear to be it. But anyway, maybe that's not even what's in the box. All right, we got... I don't know what it is. Oh, no. Is this something that... Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I think I know what it is already. Oh no, dare I even open this up here on uh, on camera? I might have to censor this. Uh, yeah, this... <laughs> I wonder if that's what any of this says on here. This is... Uh... <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I thought it is. Oh no. Oh no, okay. I'm going to very carefully open this and I'm probably going to censor the crap out of it. But, um... Yeah, it's a... Uh... It's a jelly butt. And, um, it's got boobies on it. <laughs> and it's got, yeah, my, oh my, it just farted on me. I don't believe it. It sounds just like the real thing. <laughs> oh, 
I hope the camera can hear that. <laughs> Check that out, Skeeter. What the hell am I? Well, I know what I'm gonna do with it, <laughs> but I mean for real. What? Wow. And it's it's turned around backwards. I love it best. You can get the ass and the tits on the on the. Wow, all on the same side. Holy shit! Who said Sam? Sammy did. Did Sam actually send that to me? There was no note in the box. There was no note in the packaging at all. Anywhere. Yeah, I don't know who sent that, but, um... Yeah. <laughs> that is, um... Boy, I'm glad I opened this one last. This is one that's uh, gonna be hard to top. This is gonna be really, really hard to top. I'm gonna put this on my coffee table. This is something that just has to be out, so that way I can put it right next to the tranny porn. Yes, I have tranny porn on my coffee table. It's still wrapped in the cellophane wrapper. It's never actually been opened, so therefore I haven't watched it, if you want to judge. But uh, <laughs> I put it there on purpose for when I have people over that do want to judge, so that way when they see it, they begin to wonder and they question things, you know, out of curiosity as to what they're, uh, what they're looking at or what they're seeing. But... <laughs> <laughs> this is um oh my god and i said i'd show it on video you know no matter what it is no matter how weird it is i mean i'll show it on camera and there it is i love the sound effects this is just funny <laughs> right skeeter all right you want it you gonna bite the nipples off of it oh that's funny huh skeeter Oh man. All right, so today's summary, let's see. I can protect my balls. I can pleasure my balls. I could go S&M on my balls. <laughs> and while I go nuts, I can be a furry all at the same time. Wow. Talk about some real perversions here. Um, yeah, it's gonna be an incredibly good weekend, isn't it, Skeeter? <laughs> yes, it is. Well, let me go ahead and get this off the of camera so I don't have to run the damn sensor thing on the, uh, the screen all the way through the video. <laughs> that is just, uh, just way too funny. Sam, Sam in uh, California sent that to me. I wonder who Sam in California actually is. My word. And can anybody, um, can anybody translate Chinese? Does what it say here on the box actually, um, demonstrate what, what was in it that's uh yeah that's uh <laughs> and no note man you guys send me something please include a note in the box please include a note so that way i know who to shout out to um the, this is by far by far jiggly boobies uh rubber butts gotta be the the, the best gift that i think i've gotten yet uh, well certainly the the weirdest one um <laughs> Especially if it's coming from another one of my guy friends, you know, I mean, who buys another guy friend a, a sex toy? Yeah, that's, well, that's what it is. <laughs> so anyways, um, wow, okay, we're gonna have to sign off. Uh, Skeeter, you got any words you'd like to say? No words? All right, and now she's talking, of course. Yeah, you never say anything when I ask you on camera if you want to talk. <laughs> but she always has her comments to interject when I am speaking. Anyways, like, comment, subscribe. If you'd like to send me something, please, let's get weird. Check out duckshit.net. You'll find my mailing address up there. If I change it, you'll find the updated address right there on duckshit.net. Uh, check out all of my other different social media links. You'll also find them there at duckshit.net. And uh, if you'd like to stay tuned at the end of this video, you'll see a driving video where uh, I drove through a different part of town today. I wanted to shake it up a little bit, but that was from earlier today when I was uh, going to the post office. So if you'd like to see what was going on there, so please check it out. Anyways, licky, likey, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle belly. That way you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out Skeeter the Duck's YouTube channel, right, Skeeter? That's right. She's also got a Facebook. Facebook.com, Skeeter the Duck. Uh, YouTube.com forward slash Skeeter the Duck. All at the same place. Or DuckShit.net. Find her links and go right to them and like, you know, subscribe. Thank you so much, you guys. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Um, really, thanks always. Thanks to all my 20,000 subscribers up on Duckman Cycles. Thanks to my 10,000 subscribers over on VV the Duck VV. And thanks to Skeeter's 2,000 subscribers over on her YouTube channel. Right, Skeeter? <laughs> anyway, stay tuned for the driving part, and uh, we'll see you later. Thanks again. <laughs> Woo! All right, you guys. 
we're back and we're shaking it up a little bit. Just leaving my post box. And today I'm not in a Volkswagen. I want it to be, but it's like 93. I'm looking at the temperature. It says 93 right now. So it's just hot as balls. And the last thing I want is hot balls when I'm trying to uh, go to dinner. So that's where I'm headed off to right now to meet Wild Bill and some of the other Volkswagen guys to go have tacos because it's Taco Friday. How exciting is that? <laughs> So anyway, I'm driving the, uh, the Nissan Puke. And there's one thing I gotta say about the Nissan Puke. It's got really good air conditioning. I mean, it, it lacks for power. It has a ton of other problems. In fact, I need to upload one of the videos that I still have not uploaded yet about this car. So I need to get on that and do that probably this weekend. Um, but anyway, we're headed downtown to the new Cactus Cantina, which is where a Beefo Brady's used to be. Downtown restaurants are kind of weird. They're there sometimes for a couple of years and then they're gone. They like, they rotate them out. I don't know if they're limited on, <laughs> on how long of a term or tenure they can have in a particular location, but it seems like the restaurants down there are always turning over rather quickly. There are some places that have been there for years that haven't moved at all, you know, like the Doghouse Deli or, or uh, the uh, Hop Jack's Pizza and Beer Tap Room. Um, those have been there just, uh, shit, I think as long as I've been here in Pensacola, maybe longer. But nonetheless, Cactus Tank Cantina, I think there's several locations around town, and uh, we're going to go hit that one up for some tacos. I believe it's happy hour until 6 p.m. Right now it's uh, about 5.25-ish, so I'm hoping to get there in time, and I think I should get there in time, to be able to get a couple happy hour drinks. Oh boy, driving in traffic, and... Everybody has, well, not everybody. There's been several people that have said, hey, Duckman, you know, you always take the same route to the mailbox. Could we see another part of town? Well, right now you're seeing another part of town. We're actually going down south on 9th Avenue. And this is one of the busiest parts of town right here. This is where we're going to pass uh, all the doctor's office, all the shopping malls. Um, there's a whole bunch of restaurants over here, uh, mostly chain restaurants, you know, like, like Olive Garden and um, Longhorn Steakhouse, a bunch of burger joints. Um, just Best Buy is over here. I mean, this is this is the busiest part of town. And it's a shame I'm looking at the back of a pickup truck right now. Although I guess instead of the pickup truck, you guys are actually seeing me in the mirror. The geometry of this car is a little bit different in such that um, I can still use my rearview mirror, but yet you can still see me in the reflection. So I think that's kind of neat. But yeah, this is the busiest part of town. Traffic's actually flowing pretty good for this time of day. This is unusual. Usually we're freaking stopped, you know, for half a mile back if freaking traffic lights so I mean if, if I get lucky here I might wind up making it downtown uh, kind of quickly that would be a really good thing da, 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 da. come on now oh! I'm not allowed to complain we're actually moving and we're maybe even uh, I think we might even be slightly above the speed limit but we got a red light so hey that happens here it is well, anyway, this thing has been running considerably better since the mechanics uh, worked on it last. But it's um, not as good as the last time they worked on it. The first time they replaced the ignition coil and they replaced all the spark plugs. Uh, you saw some of them were just burnt to high hell. And this thing um, ran so much better. I mean, it even ran better than it did the day that I, that I got this thing. I mean, it was just significantly better, but within a week, the check engine light started coming on and apparently it popped another ignition coil. So they replaced that other ignition coil and they did a few other things. And when I got it back, it, it didn't run as good as it did after the first time I got it back, but still much better than it had been when it was having issues. And when it's having issues, I mean, it was the worst car ever. It was still the worst car ever. <laughs> but at least it was better than itself, I guess you could say. But yeah. This thing has this um, throttle delay. You hit the gas pedal and you count to about two. It's like one, two, okay, we're starting to go. And then you wait for the transmission to shift and then the engine starts to wind up and then it starts to make power. There's, there's actually a few seconds of lag. It's not just turbo lag, it's this shitty Nissan CVT transmission lag on top of it. I think the engine would probably be bearable as far as performance is concerned if it had a manual transmission. If I could manually control the revs, and this thing is also drive-by-wire, I guess that's another problem. You hit the throttle, and it decides whether or not it wants to give you the position that you're, you're hitting the throttle in. So, <laughs> this thing just drives me nuts. But if it were hard-wired throttle and a manual transmission, I'd say the engine wouldn't be all that bad, except for the fact that it burns itself up, as we've learned by frying them damn spark plugs. 
thing is just a freaking mess. Alright, there's the hospital over on the right. I don't know how well you can see to the right. The mirror's kind of there. It's that big building that you see up there above the mirror. This is uh, where a lot of my business clients are over here, whether it be doctor's offices or restaurants that I service. Of course, I do IT for those of you that don't remember, or for those of you that are just joining for the first time. I work on all kinds of different computers, not just strictly, you know, desktop computers or even you know laptops but I actually work on POS computers as well network infrastructure uh, routing modems you know all that fun stuff switches hardware wireless access points I do all the fun stuff it's really not fun but it pays okay for what I do and I do notice that I get odd moments of times off sometimes they totally kick my ass for a 20-hour day and then you'll have other times where, um, here comes an ambulance, other times where I might work that eight hour day, but it's spread out. It might be four hours way early in the morning and four hours late in the evening. In the middle of the day, which is the best time to be off, I can go out in the garage and work on my cars. And you really can't beat that. You really can't beat that. We've got a new Ollie's restaurant over here. Ollie's is a, um, it's a, a bar and grill kind of place. You know, they have burgers and wings kind of stuff on their menu. And they had one over in Milton first, and it was a, well, actually still is. It's a very redneck bar. You go in there, but Milton's a very redneck town. But it's just like you go in there on a karaoke night, and everybody's drunk as hell singing country songs that you can't even tell what they are anymore because it's turned up way too loud. And uh, people are trying to carry the country too. And that's just, yeah, the drunk old fat ladies standing up on bar stools acting like assholes. Usually it breaks out in a fight. I mean, it's one of those places that if you wind up down here, you got to stop there once. The food is actually pretty good, and it's not too expensive. The beer is usually relatively cheap, too. And it's good. You know, they don't, they don't piss in it <laughs> to water it down. But they moved over to Pensacola and opened one up over here about five or so years ago. You know, maybe longer ago than that, but... Um, kind of nice having that, and then they open one up over here in the busiest part of town, which is probably going to be very, very good for them. Although it is in kind of a goofy location where they put it. Whatever usually goes in that particular place doesn't last very long. So, a geographical location means everything when you have a business. And I can tell you that more than anybody else, because that's one of the reasons why my last business didn't do all that well. And when we moved it, and we started to have an upturn, and things were looking good, uh, then some very bad business decisions were made. And not by me, I just wasn't the only person making the decisions. And nobody wanted to listen to me. What the hell, I'm the young guy, and that's the problem. You know, you guys watch my videos, and you see the way people comment on my stuff. I don't know anything, apparently. And then in the end, it always turns out I was right. <laughs> And you know what sucks about being always right? And it's not the fact that I have a huge ego, it's just my, my track record is, is very good. You know, I have a very, very positive track record. And like I said, the hardest thing about being always right is the fact that, number one, you have to prove it to everybody. So you have to live at a higher standard. You have to be able to, be able to, to put your money where your mouth is. You know what I mean? You need to be able to show it. You need to be able to demonstrate that you can do what you are saying. And I have time and time again. But still, people don't want to listen to me. And it doesn't earn you any friends when you're always right. Because then you get to look at them and you go, Ha! Told you so. <laughs> and I really hate doing that to people. I don't want to always be right. Let me go ahead and be wrong once in a while. Let me not have to prove everybody else wrong. Let me just, you know, just be ordinary. I just want to be on a, on a standard playing field. You know, it's, it's just everybody else. But no, no, for some reason, I have to live up to expectation and, well, outlive expectation even, and demonstrate to people that uh, I can or that I am in ways that a lot of people either can't or haven't been. So anyway, that's life. That's just, I don't know, that, that's being the duck man. Because guess who I am? That's right, I'm the mother f***ing duck man. The MFDM. Hashtag MFDM. Hashtag. <laughs> I think I'm gonna start using that more often. I don't know. It's uh, it's funny to me, and it's not that I truly believe it. It's just because it's it's so pompous and horseshit. It's fun, and I don't know. People seem to be repeating it. It seems to be sticking. And I just said it on a whim. Just said it on a whim. Why the hell is everybody slowing down here? Oh, it's a jeep driver. 
I don't know what it is. You get somebody in Jeep Wrangler and they drive slow. It's probably because they have about one inch of suspension travel. <laughs> and they're stiff as a board. I don't know. It's just... I don't know why anybody buys a, a modern Jeep. Why would you buy a modern Jeep? You want to buy a Jeep? Find yourself a CJ. I mean, I have an AMC 304 engine in the garage. It actually comes out of a, a 1969 CJ... Oh, I don't remember what the CJs were back then. You Jeep experts will chime in, I'm sure. One of you will make a comment. But I've got an AMC 304 in the garage. I traded it out for a Volkswagen engine and an install that a friend of mine needed in his dune buggy. So that's how I wound up with that. I figured I'll just I'll just sell it. I'm doing a guy a favor. He really needed the engine, and he really needed that engine out of his shop because he hasn't had a Jeep in years. Now he's looking at another Jeep, and he wants to buy the engine back. And he blew up the Volkswagen and then sold it, so that's out of the picture. I don't have to work on it anymore. And that's kind of a blessing in its own right. Um, that, uh, that was um, something that came back to my shop a lot. It's like he would drive it once or twice, blow the damn thing up, and bring it back to me, and then it would sit at my shop again. Well, my shop, shit, it was in my backyard for um, a couple months. Sometimes more than that. I'm like, you gotta come get this thing. You gotta get this thing out of the way. It was enormous. It had these huge friggin' tires on it. They were on 15 inch wheels, but I mean, it had to have been like 20 inches wide, maybe more than that. I mean, these things were just absolutely enormous. And if you check the tire pressure on them, it would always be zero. But the tires were so big and the thing was so light, it wouldn't even demonstrate that it had a flat. You couldn't even tell. <laughs> you could not even tell. Just enormous tractor tires that were on there. And in person, those are the biggest tires that I've ever seen on a sand rail. Um, I think they were there more for show than anything. You know, the thing didn't have enough power to really push those kinds of tires. But then again, you know what? Anytime you ever took it out, he never got stuck anywhere. And he'd, uh, he'd drive it out on, on uh, sandy beaches and through swamps and shit and never had any problem. That thing was interesting. It was uh, painted flat black. And he called it the Batmobile. He was going to put a big Batman sticker up on the hood of it. It actually had a fiberglass body kit on this sand rail. And I, and I haven't seen one that was actually fully dressed. But it actually had a full body on it. And he had a windshield and shit in it too. But he removed a lot of that stuff uh, sometime ago. And was going to replace Plexi with Lexan instead. Because the Plexi started to yellow. And Lexan's not known for doing that quite so badly. This also doesn't shatter. Now Lexan you can fold it every which way. Unless it's really cold. I still have that plexiglass windshield in my yard, as a matter of fact. He uh, he dropped it off there with a bunch of pieces of Lexan one day, and I didn't realize what it was until I looked at the shape of it, and then it occurred to me. I'm like, yeah, that's his windshield from his buggy. All right, we don't have too much further to go, but of course we are stuck at a red light until we can go. But we got an exciting three packages here today. Um, let's see, one of them is from Sam in California. I got one from Amazon, which is anybody's guess. And then I've got another one here, which is addressed to the Duckman from Matt in Maryland. So we'll be busting those open. And if you're watching this video, you probably have already seen me bust them open because I'm gonna try to open up the mail in the beginning of the video. If I don't do that for some reason, I get a bunch of thumbs down. People don't like seeing the adventure first. They'd rather see the adventure later if they probably don't even want to watch the adventure at all. But, I don't know, most of my videos are about the adventure. It's not just, you know, the, the goal or the destination. Otherwise, videos would be 10 seconds long. Oh, look, the doors are mounted on my car. Okay, bye. <laughs> That's another interesting topic that I've had this week. Everybody put me down about them door hinges. Those are the wrong door hinges. You should try different hinges. These are already mounted. Why the hell would I go and cut it all apart and put in some different hinges at this point? And I keep getting different, different hinge options, different hinge options. Get some off of a 914. Well, then I need 914 doors. Get some off of a new beetle. Well, then I'll need new beetle doors. You should use the ones off the Type 3. Great, so now I can take off Ruby's doors and put them on the beetle? They're not going to fit. Those hinges, actually, every single one of those three cars that I just listed have hinges just like the beetle. They mount slightly differently, but they're exactly the same. They're not offset hinges. The difference is, is the fulcrum hides behind the door panel, and there's actually a, a large pocket inside the door with, where the panel can actually fold around the hinges. Rather than being pivoted like this, they fold like this. 
so it actually hides the hinges they're concealed behind a panel so a little bit different than um well, the door design is a little bit different than that of the Beetle, but the hinges are, are they're exactly the same. They're not offset hinges. The hinges that I used are actually offset hinges that you would find on, you know, like a, a Chevy street rod or an old Ford or, you know, some kind of fancy hot rod street rod where people are looking to hide the hinges on their old, you know, 32 Ford bucket, something like that. And, um, they're offset hinges for doors that don't have a pocket that will hide the hinges, and that's that's why I chose what I did. And once they're mounted, I'm not going to undo it to put on some hinges that aren't going to work, and I'm also not going to completely redesign the door. I'll just make the hinges fit. That's all it needs. Hinge fitment. Once the hinges fit, I'm done. None of this reshaping, cutting the door, and then you can't get the piece of window glass to work in there because the door is now a different size. and. And, and I think I'm probably going to be putting one-piece windows in. I know some of you are going to be cringing about that. I am going to be doing prob probably one-piece windows. Probably. If I have a problem with the glass not closing properly because the door is, is slightly contoured and an oddity, then I'll use single-piece. But I'm probably going to use one-piece, but I'm still going to add a vent window. And, and there's more on that later. I'm not going to talk about that now. I have a design in my head. And I know if I talk about designs too early, everybody talks me down, tells me it's not going to work, and I just don't like hearing the bullshit. You know what's funny is uh, I've actually been hearing that kind of shit since since I was a kid when I used to work on my moped. You know, I had a stupid little 50cc moped and there was a whole bunch of different performance upgrades and parts grafting that I put on from other bikes and all this stuff that I was building, custom bikes, you know, when I was 15 years old and everybody told me, well, that part's not going to work. Yeah, watch me. You know, and next week I've got that part mounted. And then I didn't even have a welder. Then I was using bolts. I'd drill holes and put bolts through things, however it was possible. Bolts. Everything gets bolts. Boy, what I could have done then if I had a welder. It took me 20 more years before I got a welder. That's something I missed out on. I should have bought a cheap welder way back in the day. Well, you know, cheap tools really didn't exist when I was a kid. That was about the beginning of that era of the Chinese shipping of tools and that kind of junk. Well, we're almost here. The restaurant's up here on the right. But anyway, you know, uh, I think my Harbor Freight welder, I paid $79 for the first one. And I still got it now. It has a small electrical problem. I don't know exactly what the electrical problem is. There's something going on in there on one of the circuit boards. And I could probably fix it. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. So I ended up replacing it with a Lincoln when one popped up on Craigslist there really cheap. So I've been using that since, and, and I'm so happy with that. There's no reason I would ever want to go back and re repair the Harbor Freight welder. And I might go and fix it anyway, and then just like give it to Carlos or Thomas or something. One of those guys could use it. All right, I'm seeing parking spots unavailable here. Oh, okay, where I need to be is over here on the right. Yep, there it is, Cactus Cantina. Okay, but most of the parking downtown here is either taken or unavailable. So I'm gonna try to park around the corner. So it looks like you guys get me for a couple more minutes here. Yeah, you probably saw on the right we passed Wild Bill's bus. He got very lucky and actually found a parking spot right in front of the restaurant, which is uh, something you almost never get to see. And this traffic light up here that I'm waiting for right now always takes forever. And when it changes, you know, about four or five cars get through it because everybody goes so damn slow. It's one of those times you just get really pissed off. Oh, looks like they're actually moving pretty well for a change. Okay, right turn. Nope, there's a light changing. That was five of us. All right, there's a parking spot. That wouldn't have been too bad, but let me see if I can go down the block behind over here. Here on Jackson Street, you usually get much luckier with parking, and it's not too awfully far to walk. You usually slip right in here somewhere on the right. Oh my God, they're all taken. Wow, there's usually a bunch of these are open. Well, not tonight. Not much for that. Oh, there's some. All right, got a whole bunch of them. We're just gonna go ahead and throw a quick U-turn, and this is how we park in the state of New Jersey. <laughs> All right, we are officially here. Thank you very much, you guys, for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle belly, and check us out on DuckShit.net for all my other social media links. Thanks a lot, you guys. We'll see you next time.